a little late, but we're here and we're on target in the proud galleries uh, here and just getting ready for live TV in about nine minutes time. So you're going to get a lot of chance, if you stay with us, you'll get a lot of chance to see what the gallery looks like. There's a little preview. But thanks for joining me on Bride Day. And uh, we should have some fun, I think. First thing is going to be um, a, a morning TV slot. And they've actually come here, which is very nice of them, rather than me having to go to their studio. I'm sitting up here. Here they are sitting up. <laughs> and um, I'm going to sign off just for a second, but we'll be back on again in, in a couple of minutes. I'm going to give the camera to Pete. Pete is here. And um, we'll get on with him. And uh, yeah, send me messages. It's great. same but they're not the same they've been taken from different viewpoints corresponding to your two eyes and it's a long uh, established principle that if you give the right eye and the left eye the right information they will reproduce the effect that you had when you were actually looking at the scene in real life so it's 3d but in victorian times it was stereoscopy so this is all about stereoscopy is good for you and it's, it's been a kind of lifelong passion for me Come down here and we'll sort you out, absolutely, yes. Yeah, this exhibition is going to be here for five months, which is great, so you've got lots of time to come down and try it out. We're just near Charing Cross in the Proud Galleries, Charing Cross. And tonight is the grand opening. I do. It's a very proud moment, really, yes. I mean, this is a proud moment, it's been a proud gallery, but that was a proud moment. I didn't actually personally persuade her. I don't want to give you any false impressions. It was done through many intermediaries, like the BBC and the people who were organising the, the show. 
Um, but obviously somebody had to, I mean, I'm not ready to tell the whole story yet, but somebody had to arrange it, and obviously I thought, well, the, the best way to start this thing is with We Were Rocky, because it's the most recognizable thing, it's the most iconic thing. Um, and I just thought, wouldn't it be great if we had the guards playing it, you know, the, 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 uh, the military band playing clunk, clunk, etc. So I did a little demo of how I thought it could be, and then I thought, wouldn't it be great if the Queen could start it? Now, I think probably the BBC had the same idea. I think probably um, great minds had a single thought. Um, but uh, they didn't actually come back to me. They said, no, 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 we, we can't talk about this. We can't talk about this. Um, and I said, well, it, obviously, if we can't get the Queen, maybe we'll get someone royal. You know, who knows who we could get? But there was a deafening silence for a long time to like the, the evening before the show. And then finally, we were told, yes, we've got Her Majesty. And um, she's, she's hitting something. She wasn't, I actually asked her to be tapping a pencil, but they got her doing the teacups, which I think was a, a master stroke. And of course, Paddington Bear was the, the icing on the cake. Now, I didn't think of that. <laughs> the BBC thought that, or somebody thought that. BBC. But I was thrilled to hear through it. Yes, the book. Wittemix. Wittemix. Well, you always used to get a toy in your, uh, in your in your cereal packets when I was a kid. I guess it's not allowed these days, but you would open up your cereal packet and there was something wonderful, like a little plastic plane or something. And in Wittemix, there was a little car, something like this, but smaller. And it had two pictures on them, which looked the same. And I thought, well, what does this do? Turn it over, it says, send off one and sixpence and a packet top, and we will send you your stereo viewer, your 3D viewer. So I did that put the card in the viewer, and it was a hippo. And previously, it had been two flat hippos on this piece of paper. And suddenly, now, in the viewer, it was a hippo that I felt I could fall into, like his mouth was open, I could almost smell its breath. And I thought, this is incredible, this is 3D. Why doesn't everybody do this the whole time? Well, that's why we're doing this. This is like 3D coming up. Well, for me, yes, yes. Yeah, and the book is great because the book is modern stereo. The book is people all around the world getting into it and showing us what lockdown was like for them during that terrible COVID period, which we hope we won't return to. So the book's all about hope and inspiration during hard times. One and sixpence. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm older than everyone. <laughs> Great, thank you for being here. God bless. Cheers. Have a stereoscopic day. <laughs> Cheers. because you can't really hear them. Yeah, it must be really like... And you don't know when you're overlapping, you know. Uh, it's certainly good from this end. And I didn't actually say the book title. I think they did, so that's good. It's I hope they did. <laughs> <laughs> you said, you said I think they, they've been yeah. training it this morning yeah. as well. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> did they show the book? <laughs> Is it still on? I don't know. How do, you How do you stop it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we can't stop it. We can't stop. No. Uh, where is the stop? Oh, this this thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> you really don't trust the wizard device. Do you? I don't trust anybody. Right, we're stopping here. Are you sure you want it? That was a bit frenetic, wasn't it? Well, that was the first interview of the day, and I did have to get up at four o'clock to get here for that. Um, thanks for being with us, and uh, I'm just going to show you around the gallery a little bit so you get an idea, get a private view of. Um, what this thing is like. It's amazing. I'm shocked how incredibly it's come together. People have worked so hard, my chaps and the gallery people, just incredible. And I'll introduce you to them later if I can. Um, so it's all about stereo cards. <clears throat> and here we have some pinned to the wall. We also have some viewers. Um, so you can just pick them up and they're on chain so you can use these to look at um, the stereo cards here. And they all spring to life beautifully in, in 3D. We have a lot of 2D things on the wall uh, just so that you can compare. And this is a good way in, I think. But the idea is you can look at your 2D version here uh, and then you can pick up a viewer 
we'll pick up an owl and the picture will be in there but it will be in, in glorious 3D and um, you look at this and oh my god it comes so vividly to you in 3D. I wish I could show you on here but it's not so easy but once you're looking through here um, you see the thing in glorious real solid 3D this is one of my favorites actually this beautiful leaf picture by Rachel Miles um, but the next thing is, is the content really and the content of this part of the exhibition is all stereoscopy is good for you that's the book that's the new book which we have coming out right now and this is what it looks like um, and this is the work of photographers all around the world and I'm so proud that this happened um, incredible all amateurs but people who have taken pictures of what inspired them during lockdown <clears throat> during the whole COVID time and it's absolutely beautiful again you can see them in 2D these beautiful pictures and then you can see them in 3D using the owl. Um, so that's this book. But there is a lot more to this exhibition as well, as if that weren't enough. There's a little shop here, which is very nice, makes me very happy, because I always wanted to have a stereoscopic shop in London ever since about 1858, <laughs> which is when it last happened. Um, but over here, we have another part of the exhibition, which is very much to do with the book that we put out last year. I'll show you that book here. This is Stereoscopy, The Dawn of 3D, which is really the history and the mechanics of, of 3D. And it's a very comprehensive historical thing, as well as pretty entertaining, I think. Um, but we will see this in this part of the exhibition, which we call the Victorian Emporium. The Victorian Emporium shows you a little bit what it, of what it would be like to be in a Victorian drawing room with your pictures on the wall and uh, an exhibition here of things which you might have. Uh, we'll have a, a 3D display here with a film, 3D film on. Um, but again, here we have viewers, we have mono and we have stereo as well. And um, you'll be able to see what the Victorians saw. These are all Victorian uh, pictures which are featured in the book. Um, Stereoscopy, the dawn of 3D. And some of these are just the greatest images ever made. These um, pictures from T.R. Williams. Um, wonderful daguerreotype portraits here. Um, and some of the Victorians who, who made stereoscopy famous. This is actually Brunel on the chains of the Great Eastern. But here's the man himself, this is Charles Wheatstone, who invented the process of 3D. He had the original insight that you could take two pictures, one for each eye, and, and recombine them in a viewer, and suddenly the world would be reproduced in 3D. So it's quite something. He's, he's the hero of the whole piece, is Charles Wheatstone. Uh, here we have a lovely display of, of 3D throughout the ages. Uh, from the top 1850s, close after Wheatstone and Brewster, who took up the idea. Here we have 1900s, which is uh, another resurgence. And here's 1950s, which is roughly when, when I was able to get in there. And here we have actually a, a Weetabix viewer, which was my introduction to the subject. Also Viewmaster, which I'm sure some of your some of you had, or your parents had, or your grandparents had. Oh, yes, I'm feeling very old now. Um, what I haven't told you is there's another part of the exhibition downstairs, which is all about Queen and Queen in 3D, and that's this. But um, I'm going to show you that a bit later, because that's a separate part of the exhibition. Um, I'm also hoping to talk to some of you live, so keep sending me pictures. No, don't keep sending me pictures, keep sending me messages. Um, you know, I'm talking gibberish already, but here we are ready to go and um, I'm going to sign off for a minute because we have another interview coming up in about I think, 15 minutes time and I need to prepare myself for that. But yeah, keep uh, commenting and uh, I'm happy to see your messages coming in. <laughs> Hell yeah. God bless. See you later. We're just gearing up for BBC Radio London. Which is radio and not Sorry, TV, obviously. Yeah.
Um, so I'm going to give this back to Pete. And uh, you can see how this progresses. You can see how my day goes. And you can observe how I start to repeat myself, I'm sure. But um, who knows? Might get some good questions. Um, lots more to say about this, this gallery. It's a lot to take in. And it's a lot to communicate to you guys. But we've got all day. And we've got five months. This gallery's going to be here. You can come and see. Right, whether we're doing this visually or not, I don't know. I'll give this to Pete now. Can I turn this around? Let me, how do we turn this around? Um, yeah, I'll get the... It's just audio. Oh, yeah, it's just audio, okay. There we go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> turning around, yeah, it's turning around. There we go. Here we are, you can see the whole camera here. Social media. Oh, they're filming as well. Do they know we're filming them? <laughs> right, where are we going? Here. It's going to be a long day today. I'm tired already. <laughs> Use the book. You might have noticed I wasn't allowed to show this on uh, Good Morning TV because it would be too much advertising, but you can see it. Okay. Can you text that to Cole? Oh, Cole. How would that be? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
Uh, we're going to come see you. It's Very good. Oh, good. Oh, they're okay. We're Thank ready you very much here. for doing this for us. Going, You're yes. welcome. You're on Bronny TV I'm as well. But I wish I could see it. It's a real shame I can't see it. Sporting Lisbon. But midfielder Pierre Emile Hoybier says they'll come. We have to make sure that we are well prepared, which we are. After we have to go and we have to be successful together, you know. The fact is that you will not be there on the sideline. We have to deal with that. Everyone is well aware and the staff is well prepared and we all uh, know that they will need to help each other. Elsewhere in the Champions League, Liverpool are at home to Napoli. Both sides have already booked their place in the last 16. In the EFL Trophy, AFC Wimbledon are away to Portsmouth. The French midfielder Paul Pogba will miss the World Cup in Qatar as he needs more time to recover from a knee operation. He hasn't played for Juventus since he rejoined the Italian side from Manchester United in the summer. Wales is bit for a place in the quarterfinals of the Men's Rugby League World Cup is over after a 36-0 defeat. I can turn it down. That's really good, isn't it? <laughs> we could talk about anything. What could we talk about? Oh, I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to miss my spot, I suppose. In cricket, the Men's T20 World Cup England had a must-win Super 12 Group 1 match against New Zealand this morning. Defeat in Brisbane would almost certainly leave them unable to progress to the semi-finals. That match got underway about half an hour ago. Earlier, Sri Lanka beat Afghanistan by six wickets. BBC Radio Cricket, Radio Radio. lovely cricket. Cricket we like. Salmon, yeah. Salmon. Radio London. The new breakfast show. Mm. Good morning. It is 8.34. It is indeed breakfast. It's me, Salma Awadani, here with you. Brand new breakfast show. We're stretching away. Hopefully we're awake by now. Good to have you here. Never take it for granted. I'm glad you're riding with me this morning. And we ride across 32 boroughs here in every single corner of the capital. Do not forget, we're coming up to nine o'clock, which means it's the Kickstarter track, which means you get to pick the music that we start our day to here on BBC Radio London. Whatever track you think is gonna get the capital up and moving, get everyone motivated for their day. Whatever track you think it's going to put people in a good mood. I want to know what it is. 81333 on the text. Start your message with the word London. Nine o'clock. You get to pick the track. You start the music. So tell me what you want to hear. 81333. Start that message with the word London. But as promised, this is our, uh, our slot where we speak to a very special guest. Now, I promised you this guest since the start of the show. And I would not fail you now. As a radio presenter, you will understand that this is my anthem. Hope you guys can hear this, all right? Now, apparently it is not enough that he's an astrophysicist and musical legend. He's added photography to his list of accomplishments. The man needs no introduction, so I'll not mess around. Brian May joins me now. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Selma. How are you doing? I'm about three cups of tea down, so I'm fully caffeinated and, and raring to go. So we're good on this end. Okay. How are you? Uh, I'm probably not as good as you, because I'm not used to this kind of thing at this time of the morning. God! Yeah, I was up <laughs> at four. Actually, ten past four I was up this morning, which is not... I mean, no, usually I'm going to bed around that time. So, yeah, I'm OK. I'm gradually revving up, and I'm in a lovely place here in our, in our gallery, our new proud galleries in Charing Cross, where the exhibition's yeah. happening. So, Which is exactly what I want to talk to you about. But let's dial it back for a second, because I want to talk about stereoscopy. I think that's how you pronounce it. We all had this conversation in the office earlier this morning. Well, is that how you pronounce it? Well, uh, we all have different ways, to be honest. I pronounce it stereoscopy. Stereoscopy. I'll go with, I'll go with your pronunciation. Yeah, but, you know, you can pronounce it how you want. A lot of people pronounce it 3D, which is the same thing. And it became, <laughs> it was actually invented in the 1850s, but in 1950 or so, it became 3D, short for three-dimensional. Uh, but in Victorian times, it was always called stereoscopy. It was stereoscopy, yeah, like you say. And it well, was... 3D is easier, isn't it? Three, yeah, you can call it 3D if you want. But stereoscopy is good for you. <laughs> That's the premise like of the, the book. Of it. <laughs> yes. Tell it, well, exactly. So tell me why. Tell me how you got into this. Why this is important to you. Ah, uh, well, I've told this story many times, but it, it came from cereal packets for me because I, I used to open my cereal packet as a kid, and there was always a toy in there. They don't give kids this yes, treat these days. I remember that. Yeah. So you get a lovely little 
plastic plane or a little model soldier or something, cowboys and Indians, something like that. But for a while in the, in the packets of Weetabix, you would get a little card and it looked like two pictures side by side on a piece of card. Um, and the pictures looked like they were the same. And I remember I got, I think the first one I ever got out was a hippopotamus. So I got two hippopotamus side by side on a piece of card. And then you turn the card over and it says, send one and sixpence and, uh, and a packet top. And we will send you a 3D viewer and then you'll see what the card is all about. So this is what I duly did. One and sixpence was quite a lot of money in those days. That's quite a few breakfasts. Um, and when I put this, hippopotamus card in the viewer it leapt out at me in glorious 3d and it was like I could fall into the mouth of this hippo and I just thought this is unbelievable why doesn't everybody do this all the time if we can take photographs in 3d why would we take them in 2d why would we even bother so I was hooked and I have been ever since it's a passion I love 3d I have to say now I'm going to say something controversial now Brian Ooh. that when I go to the cinema and if there is the option of doing 2d and 3d I always pick 2D because oh. I don't want the things jumping out there. I don't want the hippo jumping out of my face because oh. I'll just spend the whole time jumping out of my skin. Well, I can see your point. Yeah, you're missing a lot, I've got to tell you, because it's an, an extraordinary experience. And if you haven't seen Avatar in 3D, you've missed one of the greatest experiences of your life. I mean, there was a time in the 1980s where they would make everything jump out at you from the screen. They used to say, coming at you or whatever, and it was horrendous. And I think that's one of the reasons where the, um, the stereoscopy kind of died for a while because people hated it. And it was just too exclamatory, things coming out and sort of hitting you in the face. But it's not like that anymore. Um, ever since I love from... Avatar, so maybe I'll take you with oh me. Oh my gosh. It in, if you... in 3D to see what, what, the, what the hype is about it. Oh, um, you, you have you to. You have an exhibition yeah. at Proud, Proud Gallery, yeah. is it? From the 3rd of November yes. to the 25th of March. Tell me a little bit about the exhibition because this project. It's, it's been two years in the making. Yeah, well, it's been about 50 years in the making for me, but yes, <laughs> it has been two. I mean, it's to celebrate the, the launch of this book. Now, the book is called Stereoscopy is Good For You. I always wanted to call it Stereoscopy is Good For You, Darling, but they stopped me doing that. <laughs> I think that's what Freddie would have called it. But Stereoscopy is Good For You is all about photographers all around the world sending us in their 3D pictures, which they took themselves during lockdown, and showing us what they were dealing with. A lot of people were confined to their houses or their rooms or their, some of them had a garden and lucky enough, some of them were able to take a short walk or whatever. And we asked them to show us what life was like in lockdown and continuing as lockdown was relaxed. So we have more than 100 photographers from all around the world contributing to this book. And it's beautiful, it's amazing. We put a lot of work into to kind of standardising everything so it doesn't hurt your eyes. I have to say that to you especially if you don't like things yes. popping out. This will not hurt you, darling. This will, <laughs> this will be good for you, darling. Um, so that's what the book is. And the exhibition is to promote the book. But the exhibition also encompasses some other stuff. And, well, three basic things. Uh, one is the history of, of stereoscopy, how it all began in the 1850s. So I, I'm sitting in a, what we call the Victorian Emporium right now where you'll see Charles Wheatstone and all the incredible things that happened in the 1850s, which absolutely swept Britain away. I mean, Britain was absolutely dedicated to stereoscopy. Uh, the, the London Stereoscopic Company in London had a million views for sale, which was like massive, like CDs or the internet or whatever. And then we have another part of the exhibition downstairs, which is all about Queen. So this is the Queen in 3D book, which I put out some years ago. And I kind of chronicled Queen from the outside on tour to the inside in the studio and that's what you'll see downstairs it's a lovely gallery i'm so grateful to the people to the proud galleries here for, for allowing us to be here we're here for five months so if, if you can't make it today or tomorrow or the next day you've got the next five months to come down and just just mosey around and, and get to experience what 3d really is you mentioned that the book, and I want you to just talk me through some of the images that are in there. Obviously, we're on, we're on radio, people can't see, but that's beautiful because we get to describe it. Yes. Uh, you, you mentioned about life in, in 3D and some of those pictures being taken during lockdown. I don't know that I ever want lockdown in 3D. It was bad enough just, <laughs> just living it. But, you know, yeah. the book does sound gorgeous and a real beautiful collection. Uh, talk me through some of, some of the images in the book. 
Yeah, the funny thing is it's not depressing because everybody found inspiration somewhere. So there's a whole section on people's pets, their cats and dogs and animals that strayed into the garden. Uh, and it's beautiful. You can tell that people got so much comfort from their animals around them. Um, some of them, it's, uh, some of them took pictures of the countryside around them, even though they couldn't see that much at the time. Some of them turned their cameras to the skies. You'll see pictures of celestial things, rainbows and moons and lots of beautiful things. Some people made models inside their houses and, and models which illustrated scenes, sort of tableaus and stuff, extraordinary stuff, echoing the, the diaboras of the 1850s. Um, and some of them took pictures of their kids or of themselves or their friends doing stuff. Um, it's a whole mixture of stuff. Some of my favorites are the nature ones where they've gone in the garden and they've found things to photograph like butterflies. The cover picture of our book is, is a monarch butterfly settled on a flower. And it's extraordinary. It's beautiful in 2D, but in 3D, oh my God, it really blows you away. You feel like you could just touch that butterfly. Um, so butterflies, bees, insects, <laughs> flowers, dragonflies, all kinds of stuff. And some people went very close, so you'll see extreme close-ups of, of caterpillars and stuff. Ooh. I mean, the breadth of this book is, is amazing. I'm looking around at it now, and uh, it still takes my breath away, I've got to say. Well, what did you take pictures of during lockdown? Because I've got to say, mine were mostly pictures of food. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have taken pictures of food, yeah. A lot of the time during lockdown, I worked on stereoscopic pictures which were made from pictures which came from space. So I work with a number of NASA teams. I'm very fortunate to be around these people. I work with real astronomers. And um, what we do is we, we look for pictures which work in 3D. So we look for a pair of pictures which have a baseline. And um, we work them up into 3D pictures. So you can see, for instance, the planet Pluto. You can see asteroids. We've been working on a book about the asteroid Bennu and it was a really interesting asteroid because it's the one that's most likely to hit the Earth in the future. So there's a probe gone there recently, Osiris Rex, and they've been sharing lots of pictures with me and we pick them out and we've made stereo views of, of the, the asteroid. It's amazing. So a, a lot of the time I spend doing that, I, I spend an extraordinary amount of time in Photoshop aligning and sorting out these pictures, but the result is stupendous because you feel like you're there looking at a comet or a meteor um, or a planet. Um, so that's what I spend a lot of time, not only in lockdown, I, I do it all through the night. <laughs> that's why you go to bed at four o'clock in the morning. That's right, yeah, I find myself <laughs> doing this stuff. I mean, I work on music that, a lot of the time, you know, but I love images as much as I love music, I guess. Well, 3D images of the moon and the constellation might be the way that I could fall in love with 3D images because that's that's mm. where you'll get me, Brian. If you we'll have 3D to... uh, image of the moon, I, I will probably sit there and just stare at it mm. for hours and hours. And I imagine you can because when photographs are brought to life in that way, when we mm. see them from uh, from different angles, it, everything just appears a little bit more real, doesn't it? And less static. That's right. I wish you were sitting here w with me because I would convert you instantly. I would get a big wow <laughs> out of you once you see these things in the in the owl. So I recommend uh, come down here. Yeah, you can come down sometime. You know, I'll meet you down here. We'll, we'll sort it out. I think. I'm, I'm open for conversion. I'm yeah. sceptical, but I'm open for conversion, Brian. Well, uh, we are the evangelists, like... so you're with the right people here. Yeah. <laughs> And like you said, the, it's five whole months that the exhibition is on at, at Proud Galleries. Yes. Uh, so people can go from 3rd of November, which we're sitting at the 1st. So in a couple of days, people can come down to the 25th of March uh, and they can see the book. I imagine they can buy the book down there as well if they want to. I can buy books. It's a coffee table book, a Christmas present. Yes, indeed. What a wonderful, what a good advertiser you are for us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I Christmas presents galore. I just relay the facts, you know, there's a book, <laughs> it's on sale, that's it. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. It's, it's quite um, something. Well, listen, it sounds incredible. It sounds like you have put so much work and effort and time into it. If you can make it, Proud Galleries is where you will find this exhibition. Head on down. Brian, I'm going to ask you before we go. We, oh. every single day at nine o'clock, we put it out to the listeners that they get to pick the, the track, the music that we start our day with here. Mm -hmm. You don't get a vote, I'm afraid, because you're not, you know, I don't get a vote either. Only the listeners get a vote. Yeah. But if you were to pick one song that London was going to get going to this morning, what would you pick? Ooh. Of your own. 
You know what? It would be The Miracle. It's a Queen track which isn't heard that much, but it's the title song of The Miracle album, which we just, we're about to re-release in a box set. And it's extraordinary. So I would play The Miracle. It's one of my favourite Freddie tracks ever. It's very light and, and pretty and very inspirational, as I think we are being here. So that's my thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the miracle. Tied it all together, you're an expert. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, I can tell you also, if you want to join us during the day, if you're not if you're not glued to your radios for, for Radio London, you can join me on Instagram, because I'm, I'm, at this moment I'm Instagramming live, and I will be kind of throughout the day sporadically. So you, Salma, are on Bry TV at this moment. I just wish we could see you. Uh, well, like, I mean, I've got a camera pointed at me, you've got a camera pointed at you, but we can't see each other. No. But, you know, we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll get down to the studio and what good advertising you were for Radio London, because you're right, the listeners are absolutely glued to the station all day, Brilliant. every day. But they may Brilliant. they may tear themselves away to head over to your Instagram to see you on live or to come down to the gallery. Brian, we'll just yeah. keep this, we'll just keep promoting each other over and over like this. Let's Very good, Selma, yeah. We're buddies so, now. Yeah, well done. We're family at this stage. Brian, mate, absolutely pleasure to have you on. Best of luck with, with the uh, exhibition and the book. Thank you so much for joining me to chat about it. Thank you. Have a great day. And you too. That's Cheers. Brian May there. Uh, Tar Thank you very much, Brian. That was great. Um, Thank you. All. Well, I'll definitely come and see your exhibition. Yes, come down. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye. March. You can check it out. It is BBC Radio London. Yes. I love her. She's You're brilliant. You're not stopping yet, are you? No. <laughs> she was brilliant, and so were you. She was nice. Yeah, she was very really nice. Yeah. Did we like her? I think we liked her. Very good. <laughs> I can close. show you a couple more things. Do you know what? I could show you downstairs if you'll uh, if you'll follow me downstairs. Go around so you can see what you're doing. Oh. Well, I could do this. Yes. Okay. We'll go around here, and I will turn this around. I can never find the round thing. Where is it? There it is. There we go. There we go. Right, I'm heading downstairs now, and um, I just want to show you what's downstairs. We're heading down these stairs now. Now, I actually want it the other way around. I want it this way around. <laughs> this is better, yeah. Here we are, we're heading down the stairs now. You've just come in the door and you're heading downstairs, and this is still being constructed, actually, but we're getting there. Uh, some stuff on the wall because we're heading into Queenland here now. So this is Queen in 3D and of course it's the history of me uh, in 3D as well as Queen because it all started with me when I was about 10 years old. But down here we have lots of nice stuff in mono. Um, we have a 3D film here which is the history of stereoscopy according to Brian May which was on um, Sky 3D when Sky 3D existed. But we have a nice version of it here, and you can wear glasses and you can see this in 3D. Something I'm quite proud of, actually. Um, there's a picture here which I think is designed for people to do selfies with. <laughs> and um, here we go into Queen Bohemian Rhapsody Purple Land. And you'll see lots of stuff here. There's going to be more viewers here as well, but lots of stuff from the Queen in 3D book. This is our dear Freddie in the studio, picture which I took, of course. This is us in East Berlin. And I think we're going to work on putting captions on this so we, we know what we're doing. Oh, I think I'm in the basement, so this is not working so well. But all around the, the exhibition, you will see viewers like this, the, the steampunk ones and also the classic large ones. And you will be able to use them to see the 3D pictures on the wall like this. And um, the quality is great. It's just beautiful. Um, very happy. The, the work that people have done here is incredible. I'm going to introduce you to some of them later on. But here we go. Some pictures which some of you may recognise from the Queen in 3D book. Uh, so yes, Bohemian Rhapsody Purple Land. <laughs> so I'm going to head upstairs again now. This goes right back to me as a kid. <laughs> and me on tour with Queen. Me messing around in hotel rooms, doing stereoscopic things, and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> you 
that's the movie. Uh, I'm going to turn this around again because I want to speak to you. Um, I'm going to have a little break now and do a bit of um, coffee and croissants, I think, because it's still morning to me. No, it's still the middle of the night to me. Um, but I will see you in a little while, okay? Yeah. And we'll do some more of this stuff. I hope you're enjoying seeing the world according to stereoscopy, because stereoscopy is very good for you, okay? Lots of love. See you in a minute. We're back. I'm now in a car um, being transported somewhere across London to Global Studios, where we're going to do what we call pre records. So these won't be live. They'll be recorded and the, the radio stations will put them out later. It'll be something that would last for like two, three weeks. Global Studios. Leicester Square someplace. There we go. Very lovely. Hello there, how are we? Oh yeah. How yeah. are you doing, Brian? All very good. good, thank you. Welcome to Global Media. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Welcome to Bright TV. We love that. We love that. <laughs> Brian TV. Yeah. Oh, is it? Stop it. Oh, hello, Brian TV. We're living our best life today at Global Media. Well, it's not that good, but Brian, you're going to have a good time. Born performer, look at this. <laughs> right. There we are. We're just so checking is, in here. Okay, so sunny is a bit. <laughs> Lots of red tape going on here. Thank you very much. Um, That's me. Got, this is Tom Hill. Tom Hill. Tom Hill. Okay. I don't even know Pete's name because I didn't know he was coming. You didn't. So I'm going to skip his red tape. So where are we now? We are in a lovely studio. This is Jenny. Hello there. And um, I'm here behind this microphone here. And we're going to do this as a, this is a pre-record, so this is not going out live. So you are the only guys who are seeing this live in some form. Mm -hmm. And Jenny's very kindly allowed us to, to film all of us while we're doing this. So I'm going to give this over to Pete. Uh, here, here's, uh, oh, he's Pete, here we are. Right. It's like a double yeah. interview. Well, this is it. So this will go out on smooth, but at the moment, well, you're getting it first hand right here. Yeah. And we're going to be chatting about your book and about loads of other things as well so it's going to be nice so thank you thank you are you ready to go i think i'm ready okay well i've got i'm going to do an intro because obviously you're brian may you need bigged up oh right okay um so i'm very excited to be joined by brian may i mean there's so many ways to describe you brian i was kind of thinking well we could always go guitarist and singer and composer and member of queen astrophysicist but now if we've got this book now we can add stereoscopic photographer to the mix. Yeah. This the of time in COVID. It's all about that, really. Yes, and it grew as a concept. Um, my lovely publicist, who's here, Nicole. Uh, actually had the idea in the beginning and let's get people to send in their pictures of, of what's happening to them in lockdown and things that are inspiring them in lockdown and we thought it would be just you know a couple of weeks let's get a few things but it was a deluge of pictures amazing pictures and we had a job whittling it down to the I think there's about 200 pictures in the book uh, but well over 100 stereo photographers from all around the world have contributed and they're all amateurs they're not, not professional photographers but they're all people who have just taken it up for, as a passion same as I did, and a lot of them don't even have a stereo camera, they just have their iPhone or whatever, and they go click, click, moving the camera to the side between the two and clicks. that's all and you need to do. That's all you need. I could do it for you right now, if Pete wasn't using my phone. Um, Can I just say, if, if you're listening and um, you're wondering what on earth is stereoscopy, it's kind of making a photograph 3D, isn't it? It's 3D, yeah. It was called stereoscopy in, in Victorian times, which was when it was invented. The 1850s, it was a massive explosion, something on the level of the internet now. You're talking about London Stereoscopic Company having shops in London that were selling a million stereo views on their shelves. It was an enormous thing. It's the first time people have been able to see tea planting in China or the Great Pyramids or, or India or whatever. It was incredible to the Victorians. 
And they loved all the same stuff that we loved. They loved personalities. There was lots of stereos of, of politicians and actors and actresses, all sorts of stuff, wonderful landscapes, um, and also pure invention, like things like the Diablois, which we published a book on, where you're looking at little models of satanic creatures telling stories and having fun in hell. All kinds of stuff was done. Anyway, it's, um, that's when it started, and it was called Stereoscopy. And it kind of died out after 10 years. It's really odd. It disappeared almost entirely until about 1900, when there was a massive boom again. Keystone views were in all schools all around the world. And then it died out again about 1915, I suppose. And this has been the fate of stereoscopic photography ever since. Big revival in 1950 or so, when you've got Viewmaster came along. I think we've all had Viewmasters when we were kids. And you've got things like Mighty Mouse and Stereo. And um, and, and then it was called 3D. That's when the word 3D comes along. Three dimensional is short for three dimensional. And so, and of course now, recently we've had Avatar, which really is the pinnacle of what can be done in 3D. I think James Cameron absolutely got it right, and he's coming out with a new one soon. Can't yeah. wait. It's going to um, be long. Three and a half hours long. Yeah, yeah. But stereoscopy or 3D is basically the the great granddaddy of virtual reality. It's the same thing except virtual reality. You have a, this device which will keep your landscape still while you move your head. Um, it's honestly, this book is amazing. And when you look through there, I mean, not only are there, you know, dogs and cats, there's landscapes, there's skyscrapers, yeah. there's queen, you know, there's yeah. some um, brilliant photographs in there and you get some mm. glasses, I suppose, to make that vision of it possible. It's brilliant. It's a really great book. And I was lost thank in it you. for about a good hour and had to put it down because I had to do some work. That's um, great. So thank mm. you very much for doing this. Mm. It's great. Are you, are you a decent photographer yourself? I try, you know, I've, I've taken pictures all my life. My dad taught me how to develop my own pictures and print them in the dark room. It was one of the most magical things ever. Um, so that got me into it. But strangely enough, I was the one who got us into stereo photography because he didn't know about it. My dad knew all about photography, but he sort of missed out on this on the 3D thing. And as soon as I combined that, he was hooked as well. He became a, a 3D photographer. Gosh. Anybody can do it. It's really simple. It is simple. You just have to take the two photos. That's right. If it was TV, I could show you. Okay. Okay, maybe we'll do a little bit of demonstration in a minute and then we can put that up at the same time. Yeah. And do you know what? You are so busy at the moment, especially with, you know, just recently, the new track coming out, the new Queen song yes. as well. I mean, Face It Alone, everyone has loved it. Was that something that you planned to do or did was it genuinely just kind of something that you decided on doing this year? A genuine rediscovery really because we've been through all these tapes before and we thought well anything that isn't close to finished perhaps we should just leave and then this time when we went through we, we've been constructing the box set of the, the miracles like the whole miracle sessions and once we really started to look there was all kinds of stuff in there which had, had never been heard and this is one of them I mean it's actually a fragment it's it, I think if we worked well I'm sure if we'd worked on it to its completion at the time, it would have been longer and more involved. It would have had all sorts of different, probably turned into Bohemian Rhapsody by then. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but as it is, we, we weren't tempted to um, to go back and play on it. I think that that would have kind of spoiled the, the magic of it. So what you hear was all done in 1989, is it? Uh, and um, it, we just mixed it nice. Uh, our, our boys did a great job of kind of rescuing it. But it's, you hear us all in the studio together. And, it, and for me even, you know, I, I got quite emotional when, when I heard it nicely presented when they'd done a nice mix of it. And yeah, you hear Freddie singing and he's playing piano and uh, Deaky's there with his bass. I'm there putting in a guitar solo, probably as a bridge to the next verse, which never happened. Yeah. And, um, and Roger's there doing his thing, you know, hitting things, like all Roger does. <laughs> Do you know what it's, it's it's just it's just such a lovely lovely track as well and it, it it's just it, d did you love the fact the the fans reacted so well to it was it it must have been nice for you because also there'll be new fans that haven't weren't around when you were releasing original material that's right yeah and i get a buzz i get just the same buzz as, as the fans i think just hearing freddie's voice that intimately it's quite nice that there's not much on the track you know, it's very sparse, so there's lots of room for it to breathe, and you can hear every little, little kind of movement of Freddie's 
voice box and his mouth moving around. It's, it's quite incredible to hear. It is very emotional. And the song is emotional too. It's a very kind of bear it all song. There's more. There is more on the on the box set. So if you get the uh, the miracle sessions, there's at least I think six tracks which you won't have heard before. Will you release them individually as well? Um, I guess so. I don't I don't know if we would release any more singles. I don't think singles are quite what they used to be. And I, I think we'd rather probably people got into the whole sessions. And w the reason I like the sessions so much is because you feel like you're a fly on the wall. You can hear us chatting and laughing and trying out things, making mistakes. I, I think people enjoy that. Um, it's like watching, I watched the Beatles thing on uh, Netflix, you know, the, 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 and I love that, just seeing all the stuff that we know. And you get that kind of feeling listening to the Miracle Sessions, I think. It's us in our, kind of in our prime, working together, having fun, arguing. <laughs> <laughs> but out of it comes some gems. You yeah. know, there's a lot of chemistry there. Do you know what, with Face It Alone, I ha I, only because I was preparing for this, I was reading an interview that Rami Malek had done, and he was oh. saying that he believed that you guys should have done a Bond song. And it kind of made, it's like, actually, that's a good point. But this yeah. does feel like it could have been a Bond song. You know, a few people have said that, yeah. It's a shame. Um, well, it could still happen. Yeah. It's just, it's odd, actually, because I know Michael Wilson very well. He's one of the archetypal, I was going to say ancient, I can't call him ancient. He's one of the original, him and Broccoli are the, are the original producers of James Bond, and I've known him for years. But I've never really had the temerity to go up and say, why don't you give us a Bond theme? <laughs> it's just never happened. It could happen. It could happen. It could happen. I kind of feel like it should. I mean, such mm. an iconic British band associated with such a, mm. a British kind of franchise. It would make sense. Mm. Well, maybe this is it. Who knows? Yeah, it does kind of sound that way, doesn't it? Yeah, I definitely mm. think it would. Um, talking of Rami Malek as good well. Title. Yeah, face it alone. Good Bond title, isn't it? I'll talk to Michael Wilson. I think he's coming to my, my launch tonight. I think <laughs> that's brilliant. I love it. Sorry, I interrupted you. That's all right. That's all right. Obviously, Bohemian Rhapsody was so huge. Um, the other thing that I uncovered was that you have spoken of, about potentially exploring what might happen next. Is that is that true? Would, would you consider doing another film just about the remaining members of the band? We would if we'd find the right script, yeah. I mean, it actually took 12 years to get that script together. I mean, we didn't write it, but we worked with writers for a long time, trying to make sure that we did Freddie justice and we didn't overblow him and we didn't bias it in any direction and, and that it told the truth yeah. and that it was entertaining. So it took a long time and, um, I think we have to uh, we have to thank Peter Morgan for the kind of heart of the film. I, I don't know if you know Peter Morgan wrote The Crown and a lot of other amazing stuff. He's an incredible writer. He had one of the first goes at writing a script, and he made a breakthrough. He said this film is about family. He said you guys were a family, and the film is about whether a family needing a break, needing to get out and flex his muscles, be on his own. He goes out there and finds he doesn't like it that much, and he comes back to the family, and people are reunited. He said that's your film. And I think, you know, we actually didn't accept his script, which is a bit scandalous, isn't it, if you're Peter Morgan? We went round a lot of other routes and eventually came back to some of his ideas. Um, but I think that's the essence of the film. We were family. Freddie was family to us, and it was hard to kind of let him go. Um, but there was a time when it was right for him to come back. Yeah. That, that's why the film affects you, I think, because you, you, we were kind of closer as, as families than any of our kind of birth families, you know. Um, I, I love the film. In fact, I played golf this summer with Gwilym Lee, who played you. I love Gwilym. Um, amazing. Do you think he played you well? <laughs> He's stupendous. He, we spent some time together because he plays guitar and I wanted, he said, I want to find out how you play guitar. So we spent some time sort of swapping licks and stuff and I showed him how I do various things. What I didn't realise was all the time we were doing that, he was clocking me and my mannerisms, my voice, the whole thing. And when he done the takes for the film. I actually showed it to my kids. I showed them a rough cut of the film. My kids are quite big now. <laughs> but they said, oh, it's really good. And the guy who plays you is really good. But obviously you did the voice, right, Dad? And I went, mm -mm, no, Willem did the voice. I mean, he fooled them. So I, I think he's great. Pretty impressive. Yeah, they were a wonderful team. We were so lucky to have those guys. Yeah. They became us. And some of the stuff you see in the film, they improvised. It's not mm -hmm. all script. A lot of it's scripted, you know, but they got so into being us that in some of those scenes where, when we're arguing, they're sort of, it's happening for real. 
Um, I loved it, I really did. And no, we've got to discuss one other thing that happened this year, which by the way, we were all going, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna be on the roof? I'm obviously oh. talking about the Platinum Jubilee. You mm. did open the show and you did get raised up on a platform. Yeah, that's me, isn't it? <laughs> that's what I do. Is that in your contract now, whatever I do? Seems to be I must be elevated somehow. Yeah, yeah I have to be elevated. Yeah, it was fun. I love that stuff, I must say. And I love the planning and the staging of kind of making a spectacle. And if Freddie had been around right now, I'm sure I would have been doing it for him because he should have been up there now. But it's, it's enjoyable doing it for myself. And it started off obviously on Buckingham Palace roof for the other Jubilee, the Golden Jubilee. And um, it's fun just getting the ideas and putting them together because somebody has to write it, obviously. Uh, in the case of the, the Golden Jubilee, I wrote that fanfare for the orchestra and the bit where the guitar comes in. And obviously I didn't write God Save the Queen, but I wrote that arrangement for it. And then I just had to play it, which was pretty hair-raising because everybody knows what it ought to sound like. You know. But for this, I thought, well, what do people want to hear? If we're going to open the show, what are the, what's the most distinctive thing? It's got to be... <laughs> and then you had the Queen and Paddington tapping their sauces yeah, along. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the icing on the cake, really. And I did ask for something. I didn't ask for Paddington there, but I did say, look, here's a demo of what we could do. We could have the... The, the the marching band the costume cars or whatever you know, um, doing the the percussion and we can come out of that but wouldn't it be great if we had for instance the queen tapping her pencil or something like that so I kind of gave this idea to anyone who was interested <laughs> my chaps the BBC the producers of the show and everything and it, they went very silent. And it was like, well, you know, we'll see what we can do. Well, we have ideas too and whatever, you know, we don't, we can't tell you what we're going to do. So I'm kind of stuck with our demo of what we're going to do, but we don't know what they're going to do. It's an odd situation until the night before the show, they said, actually, we did get the Queen. The night before. Wow. Uh, they, and they got her to tap the spoon instead of the, uh, the, the pencil, which I thought was great. And they got back into bear. <laughs> and what more can you ask for? <laughs> It was brilliant. So I now need to know what you're going to do for the coronation because I'm assuming you'll be elevated on some platform somewhere in London yet again. I don't know. You can't. I can't assume that we'd be asked. It would be lovely if we could do something. Yeah. Yeah. Good. They're very honestly. They're very hair, hair raising those experiences because it is live. It's completely live. So if you screw it up, you would screw up in front of a billion people. But you have performed to so many huge crowds like that throughout yeah. your whole career. Is what's the most nerve-wracking the most terrifying of all those shows the roof of Buckingham Palace <laughs> okay because it was a complete one-off and nobody had ever done it and it was completely live and I couldn't hear the orchestra very easily they were miles away and it was all it was all going to be out of sync if I could hear them so we had to devise ways of, of us hearing the same uh, core um, time signature I had a conductor who I couldn't see very well and I'm on top of the roof and anything can go wrong I've got a wire that came up through the palace which did go wrong, so I couldn't hear anything about half an hour before the show. It was utterly terrifying, and um, I'll never be the same again. <laughs> but you kind of face the fear, you have to. Yeah. It's a real, it's a life-changing experience, that stuff. And the people used to say, were you, were you afraid of falling off the roof? No, I was afraid of looking an idiot in front of a billion people. Well, you did it, you did it brilliantly, so that's, that's the great thing. I've yeah. got to ask you as well, because Oh, we love Adam Lambert and Queen. I mean, he's he's superb. Will you be doing any unique new material with Adam? I think you know, the honest answer is I don't know. We have kicked things around on a sort of trial basis, uh, but nothing's happened yet. Nothing. We haven't felt right about it yet. I think we're so consumed with the live show, it just kind of it, it becomes everything for us when we're together. And Adam is such an amazing performer. I mean, he truly is. No, I, I used to call him, I still do call him a gift from God, the GFG, because where would you find a voice like that, and a personality like that, and a performer like that, and someone who can engage the audience without being Freddie, you know, he doesn't have to try to sort of emulate Freddie, he just is what he is, and he's incredible, so we're so lucky to have this guy who, who can do all that, and you can give him anything, I can't think of another person who could do that. Um, and you can take little pieces out of some obscure Queen album and say, yeah, try this, and have them go, yeah, yeah, I'll try it. And it'll be great. You know, yeah, it'll be he's brilliant. great. He is brilliant, and he's, you can't take your eyes off him when he's performing mm. as well. Mm. Um, well, look, I, I do think that, unfortunately, my time with you is up. Before I go, there's this 
I was looking for something quirky or random about you and I heard that you were really good at accents. Is that true? Oh, you are? Maybe, maybe I used to be when I was a kid. I, I kind of got too self-conscious about it after. I don't know if I seem to... How's your Scottish? My Scottish is not as good as it should be because my mother is from Pitlochry, so it should be really good, but it's not because it's kind of relaxed, I think. Um, yeah, I don't, know if I, I don't know if I can embarrass myself really. Mm -hmm. I like, I, my best friend is, is Tony Iommi, so when I'm with Tony, I'm sort of like, oh, you're the good lord, are you talking to the good lord and lord? Lord, lord? So I, I get into that, but he has to be around for it to really blossom. Brilliant, I love that. Well, I'm glad I did find a random fact that is true then, so that was good. Um, Brian, thank you so much. Thank you, Jenny. So Amazing. lovely to chat, and honestly, the book's brilliant, so good luck with it as well. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you. Oh, nice. I'm so sorry, my phone kept yes. vibrating. I, I didn't want it to... Um, did that interrupt my phone kept vibrating? No, I, was, I just wasn't sure if it was them trying to get me out. <laughs> 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 I was trying to turn it off and it just... Did, was it bothering you? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Can we pop those screens back into me just for photos? Yeah, the van should. Oh, they changed you already. The van can go back to you very quickly just for a photo. How could you do that? I'm glad you enjoyed it. That means oh a lot. I will I'll, I'll, I'll pick up on that. I'll pick up on that. Okay, you can change back to gold. We should tell you as a James, nice to meet you. How are you? We've spoken on Zoom uh, a couple of times. I've had the pleasure of being on Cry TV. That's why I thought you were But we've never met in person, so this is amazing. Thank you. How was Bordeaux? Yeah. First time? Yeah. That went. 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 Not uh, not as much as I'd like to, um, but um, yeah, I just, it looks incredible. I just just need, like you say, just need more time. That's, the thing. that's what we felt. Yeah, it was a nice little getaway, but it's like oh, <laughs> you just need more time to yeah. escape the madness. Yeah. Our road. Oh, we are really good. So the mic's up. Sorry, uh, can I just get through this? Oh, maybe stop. Yeah. We've got the gold in. Oh. Any gold in? Are you alright with the side now? Yeah, of course. Stop Let's for a minute. Stop one, stop the, okay. okay. We've done it before. We've got the, 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 the mic with the logo. Those ones are upside down, so we're just using the play. You, well, you can say whatever. Of course you can. Uh, can I introduce you? Yeah, absolutely. Are we back on, Pete? Well, this looks amazingly similar to the last studio, but of course it's not. It's a completely different studio, and we seem to have lost our brand <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> And um, 
This is smooth radio, right? This is gold. Oh. We're, we're, yeah, we're gold now. See, it's it's so confusing. What am I like? So no. This is gold. This is James. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. Nice to meet you. And James has been on Bright TV before, but not quite in this situation. Not in this. This is the well. This is your first time in a radio studio. Absolutely. So. Since lockdown. Yeah. Since lockdown. So yeah. yeah. This is great in person. This is fantastic. So Apparently. we're almost we're almost ready to go. Are we? Uh, oh, yeah. Are we going to go now? Take the branding off. Yeah. Okay. Go. Brilliant. Okay. Here we go. Let's start recording. Great. Wow. What a pleasure this is. First time back in a radio studio since lockdown, and uh, he's chosen to come and speak to us. The legend that is Brian May is with us this morning. Hello. Thank you very much, James. Very <laughs> kind of you. How are you? I'm not feeling very legendary at the moment. Well, you know, I wanted to say, I appreciate this even more because I remember the last time we spoke, you said, you admitted to me that you're not really a morning person. Oh, completely not. No, I got up at four, ten, ten past four a.m. Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you do it every day, so hats off to you. But usually I'm going to bed around that time, so it felt pretty weird for me. I was going to sleep in the car, going to know everything. So I'm just about waking up, really. But I've done. We've had quite a full day already down at the um, at the gallery. Where we yeah, well, we, we've got to talk about that because this this brilliant new book that I've got in front of me, which is uh, oh, it's just fantastic. It's fascinating. But I think it was April last time we spoke. You were just about to release um, another world. Yes. So the world's changed since then. So much has happened since so then. So much. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've got to talk about the Platinum Jubilee, can we? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because I mean, you kind of last time we spoke, you kind of hinted towards the fact that you were going to be there, well, and then right in the middle of this crazy touring schedule, there you were. Yeah, well, of course you're not supposed to talk about things like that, and but we were planning it for months in advance. These things just need an infinite amount of planning. There's so many people involved, and on the day there's a five dozen people wandering around with clipboards telling you what to do, and it, it's kind of a nightmare. <laughs> Out of it came something great, I think. Yeah. I was really pleased. It's so nice that the Queen was still around to see that, wasn't it? You know, it wasn't oh, long it... afterwards that she, that she uh, left us, you know. But it was a great thing, I think, the Jubilee. And, of course, for us, it's a nice feeling to be asked for, for a start and then to be given the opening of the show. So we, we worked on doing something which is going to be spectacular, so we thought. And, um, goosebumps. I've just goosebumps watching that. It was just amazing. Um, and, you know, with, with, the, with the royal marching band and the, and the drums, and I think probably the icing on the cake was the uh, was the video, the video intro, yeah. which yeah. Was, was your idea. Is that right? It was. It was definitely partly my idea. I don't know quite what the BBC had in their minds before we started speaking, but somebody has to decide what we're going to play in the beginning. You know, we're opening the show. What are we going to play? And I had this idea that it would be nice to open with the Little Rock here because it's so recognisable. And I thought well, it would be nice if the if the military bands played that because it would suit the snare. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of made a demo of how it could be, and Rocky would then come in and we would do something with me for it. So we have great guys who work on our staging, uh, Rick uh, from Stewfish, who do all the Queen shows. You know, talking about stage and, and lights and sound and everything. So we talked and we thought, okay, we'll put me some someplace up there because we realised we were going to be on this um, huge kind of wedding cake that, yeah. that Queen Victoria sits on. So we thought, yeah, okay, we'll get Brian up there and <laughs> I can make an entrance when the guitar solo comes. It all started to fall into place in my head. And then, of course, you have to send this to the BBC and see if they approve, and they did. But I kind of went a bit further because it'd be nice to have the marching band, but wouldn't it be nice if the Queen could actually kind of start the whole thing off by tapping something like it? I had this idea that you could have, you could start off on the corgis and then you would pan around and then you'd go, you see the, the Queen signing some documents with her pencil and going. So I don't know what they thought of it because I didn't hear back from the BBC. They said, no, no, we can't tell you what we're thinking, but we'll take all this into consideration. And it wasn't until the night before the show that they finally said, OK, we did get the Queen. Oh, wow. So that was quite, you know, <laughs> up to then, we've been kind of in the dark. We're doing our bit and they're doing their bit, but I didn't know. And Adam really. didn't even know until after know. the show. He didn't, re he heard this incredible noise going up behind him, but I think he was so lost in the moment that it wasn't until afterwards he realised who'd introed him on stage. <laughs> I don't know, it was so hush-hush, you know, nobody was allowed to know whether I, I actually kind of had an inkling because the very fact that they couldn't tell me told me something. It had to be very, very secret if they couldn't yeah, tell me. Yeah. Because I'm supposed to be working on making it all fit together. Yeah. Um, 
but it was good news and everything. She she performed it so well with the spoon and everything. And Paddington Bear was was also an excellent performer. You know? I think yeah. he played the part well. Yeah, I never would have thought of Paddington Bear. I've got to say, <laughs> that, that's a, that's a, an extra stroke of genius. Well, let's get, give you a chance to, 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 to sip some more coffee and let's let's play We Will Rock You right now. We'll be back with you in just a bit on Gold Breakfast. Here we go. Queen and we will rock you on gold. Brian Mays uh, with us this morning. I wanted to talk to you about a video um, that you posted on Insta uh, yeah. last week. Of course, we, we, we lost the great Jerry Lee Lewis, yeah. which was really, really sad. Yeah. But what did put a smile on my face was the video that you posted um, from back in the late 80s, I think, when you got to perform with the great man himself at the mm -hmm. Hammersmith Odeon in London. I get so lucky. I got to do some such great things in my life. And he was such a hero to me. I've been talking with a lot of my mates about Jerry Lee Lewis because, of course, you know, suddenly you, you, you're back in that time. Yeah. And when I think about it, where did the real rock and roll come? You know, you have kind of rockabilly that was starting up around that time. And you have a kind of fusion between blues and rock, which you actually don't see in the Elvis film. And I, I, I think they really missed out on something there because there's a lot of country and a lot of blues and they come together. It wasn't just blues, but also it's kind of jolly, you know, like Rock Around the Clock with Bill Haley. That's not rock like we know it today. Where did the kind of anger and passion come from? My answer is two piano players, not guitar players. Jerry Lee Lewis is one and Little Richard is the other. Mm. They're screaming their guts out. They're not singing like Johnny Ray or, or Frank Sinatra. They're screaming their passion. And it's kind of on the verge of uncomfortable. That's where rock music came from, in my opinion. And you've you got to look a bit later before the guitar actually catches up, I think, strangely enough. I mean, James Burton is, is in there doing uh, some of the Elvis stuff and, and, um, and Rick Nelson. But, you know, until you get to Jimi Hendrix yeah. and Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, you, you, that's when you get the, the real passion coming into the guitar playing. It's fascinating for me because you think of rock music as being completely guitar dominated, but really those, those two guys, I think, put the anger in which made rock what it is. The reality, the passion, you know. How was it for you? I mean, was it nerve wracking for you? How was it for me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thinking about a long time ago. Yeah, no, I can remember it vividly because there's a whole sort of aura surrounding Jerry Lee Lewis and he had a lot of security and stuff. Yeah. And, and didn't he give you strict instructions before? Well, he, he didn't. I don't think we were allowed to speak to him before the show. Really? He was really kind of cordoned off. And I'm there with, with some great performers. I'm, um, I'm just trying to think who was there. Um, I'll, I'll get back to it. But we're all there. So I was thinking, yeah. what are we going to do? And we get instructions via someone else of what song we're going to play and, and what order it's well, Actually, we don't know what order it's going to be. We're just going to hang around at the side of the stage until our number is called. And, and then we get to go on stage with Jerry Lee Lewis. It's real. <laughs> You know, it's kind of hard to imagine. Very old school, old, old, old school. Um, anyway, my time com comes, and it's like I know what song we're doing. I think we did a couple, and I go on there. And we've also had the instruction: nobody goes in front of the piano, nobody upstages Jerry Lee. You do not go between him and the audience, or between his piano and the audience. So we're all kind of standing in the line. You can see it in the clip. I think it's Dave Davies is next to me. Yeah, that's he's right. Yes, yes. Who's one of them? complete original originators of rock music yeah. See, i should have mentioned him he's probably the first heavy metal guitarist isn't he really Dave Davis. anyway we're all there and i go on there i get carried away because i'm like when do i get the chance to play with jerry and my mo i'm looking around does he want me to play yeah he wants me to play so i go forward and i start doing it and suddenly i'm between him and the audience i think oh shit. <laughs> oh God, i've i've uh, i've made a mistake here and uh, <laughs> But I kind of looked over to him and he gave me that kind of wry smile like, okay, buddy. You know, I get you it. Know, You're having the time of your life. Yeah, and what you don't see in the clip that I put up is at the end of that, and you can see it in the full version, he says, oh, and I didn't realise this until yesterday. He says, oh, that guy with the guitar made me want to sing Great Balls of Fire all over again. And he means me. He doesn't know my name. He's, he has no idea. He's just some guy who came up and played loud guitar <laughs> beside him. But the corollary is, and I only found this out this morning, a good friend of mine was working with Jerry Lee just right up until he died. And um, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. And they started talking about it. And Jerry recalled that moment. And he said that was an amazing moment, you know, when Brian came over and did that. So he knew what I, who I was afterwards. And that was just before he was taken to oh, us. So that kind of made it was me feel incredible. very emotional, yeah. And it was uh, one of the one of the tracks was whole lot of shaking going on. I think you performed that yeah. together. So look, we're going we're gonna to take a break. We're going to play. How about a bit of Jerry Lee Lewis on the show? Oh, marvelous! 
A whole lot of shaking on gold. Jerry Lee Lewis on Gold Breakfast with Brian May, a guy that got to play with a great man himself. Uh, before we go any further, I just must congratulate you on the huge success of Face It Alone. Getting to number one in 21 countries, could be more now, yeah, yeah. on That's iTunes. Amazing. That's yeah. incredible. Amazing, yeah. We never thought of it. We never thought it would have that big an impact because we thought of it as a fragment and it's like, do we put it out? Is it is it complete enough to put it out? And then there was the temptation to get in there and embellish it. We could have played new guitars, we could have done, but we didn't. We just mixed it, put it together. And um, I think it speaks to those days so strongly. And because it's so simple, Freddie's voice comes through so clearly, like in your face. And mm -hmm. I think that's why it's had such an effect. I love it. I must say, I love just hearing his voice. I love hearing what he does with that incredible instrument, that golden instrument that he has. And you hear the passion. He's working on the song. When you hear him on this record, it's kind of like a demo. It's the, it's the first time he's ever sung it. So he's working on it, and it probably would have changed quite a bit if we'd continued to work on it at the time. But it's all there. His, his feeling, his passion is all there. So, yeah, we loved it, and we thought, yeah, let's, let's put it out and see what people think about it. And I, well, they loved it, and there's a video as well. The video's been out for a couple of weeks as well, so yeah. it's fantastic. Let's hear a bit of that. Hmm. Okay. A good idea. This is Gold Breakfast, Queen, face it alone. So, um, Brian May's with us this morning. Uh, another one of your passions is photography, which moves us on nicely hmm. uh, to this fantastic new book. Stere stereoscopic photography, that's right. That's right. Um, and this new book, um, Stereoscopic... Stereos <laughs> Stereoscopy is good for you. Stereoscopy is you can, good You can you. teach me a few things. Yeah, uh, stereoscopy, yeah. life in 3D. Um, yes. You got the idea for this during lockdown, is that right? Yes, and uh, I have to credit Nicole, our lovely publicist, who's yeah. with me today. She, she said, you know, let's get people to send in their stereoscopic pictures. And we're talking about a kind of community which had grown up on Instagram. Strange enough, I'm speaking of Instagram now. But it gradually grew, and I think partly because of lockdown, because we all sort of gravitated towards some new kind of communication. And I started off by playing a lot of stuff on there with a the guitar, and people would respond to me and play along with me. But I also started putting stereoscopic pictures up, 3D pictures, mm. which I'd taken, and people would respond. And I realized that there was a kind of growing stereoscopic community there. So it was Nicole, as I say, who said, let's get them to send stuff in which shows us what their world is like during lockdown and see what's inspiring them, what, see what's getting them through. And it started off as let's do a little, then let's do a little pocketbook of it because it looks like it's going well. But then it kept coming. It's like an avalanche of people. And we thought this has to be a serious book because the, the quality is incredible. So then me and to me, actually, my uh, wonderful archivist, we worked very hard to format all these into a, into a, into a configuration which doesn't hurt your eyes because of course everybody's formatting is different so for the book we had to really nail it yeah. to make sure you don't get a headache when you leave through the book having done that we just looked at it and thought this is a work of art this, there is such a breadth of invention and technique from these basically amateur stereographers but they all get it they've all got something special so you see I love it and I look because my eyes aren't great but I love it I mean you get the glasses in the back of the book Mm. And I was amazed at how quickly the pictures just leap out of the page. And it, it, you'd really get the hang of it quite quickly. And there's some great pictures in it. There's wildlife pictures in there, people's pets, yeah. um, some fantastic landscapes. Um, yeah, I, did, I had no idea, by the way, until I, I saw this book that you have your own woods named after you. Oh, that's <laughs> another thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I, I, bought, well, I bought a woodland years and years ago with the idea of returning it to kind of primeval state. It was a kind of thing that I had but of course I was becoming more involved with rescuing animals at that point so it became a project to be, to give wild animals a, a better chance in life and that's continued and then I got the opportunity to buy some farmland which was a, forming a ring around this property because the, the, the woods weren't very big and it was even though we could look after the animals on our property they would escape and go somewhere else and it, it wasn't a good life for them so I was able to buy the farmland which was going to be a housing estate and convert it back into a woodland. So this is probably about 15 years ago. We planted 101,000 trees, and it's now a beautiful woodland, which all the kids who are growing up around there can go in for their Get nature. Get to enjoy, yeah. So they've got a, a forest instead of a housing estate. So I'm, I'm 
I, I, I'm quite, I think I'm quite popular at the moment. <laughs> until <laughs> Fantastic. I, until I do something wrong, you know. But actually, it's quite difficult because you have com slightly conflicting groups of people who want to use the forest in different ways. You know, yeah. Some people want to walk dogs, which is great. But of course, if the dogs are off the lead, they will decimate a lot of the wildlife. So you've got to kind of find a path between different people's interests. Yeah. And if you do too much in the way of trees, you, you're not doing very well for your butterflies or your, your invertebrates. So you, it became a real learning curve for me to try and make the best use of this new woodland. But boy, it's beautiful. It's be and you know what? And you can see some pictures because there are some pictures mm. uh, in this new book, which is oh. out now. And it's, it's fantastic. Honestly, I urge anyone to just, just go and discover it because it's fantastic. Um, and there's an exhibition in London as well. If you're in, in, in the London area, people can go and see. Yeah, Charing Cross. It's the yeah. proud galleries near Charing Cross. And we will be there for the next five months. So it's great. All the way until March. Probably. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Come in and experience stereoscopy or 3D or both. It's brilliant. Well, uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much for getting up early and, and also for being our first radio interview. Uh, post lockdown it's been fantastic chatting to you right thank you and it, and, it just uh, proves that stereoscopy is good for you <laughs> it genuinely is thank you so much for coming in thank you james a real pleasure all the best thank you excellent nice right. that was great right. absolutely brilliant brilliant thank you so much thanks guys wow. so so there. Sorry, huh? oh well nice. lovely 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 to meet you in person finally Thank you. Jane, can we grab some pictures, please? Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing quite like <coughs> doing it in person. Look at the girl. I've got very used to Zoom. I don't know about you. It saves you a lot of legwork. It's leg easier. Work. It's easier. But there's nothing quite like. But it's um. Oh, it's easier. The real thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Pictures. Just have you. Just We didn't. That's okay. We did legs didn't work. Forest question, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, I didn't. Come on, say to your thanks for being here. Oh, okay. so we're going to come a little bit closer so we yeah. get the light. Is this good? Can I have a box to stand on? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, got, I got a trap here. <laughs> oh, this is perfect. Is that okay? Perfect. Oh, Three, brilliant. two, one. And I'll get a little bit closer. One. Three, two, one. Brilliant. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Can I have so so yeah. 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 me, please? Sure thing. Hello, Brian. Right, if you know oh, yeah. he's our head of... Oh, sorry. Thank you so much for it. It's a super Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Thanks. three, two, one. A little bit closer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Boss man. Boss he man. is the big boss man, yeah. <laughs> the mighty gold, right? <laughs> <laughs> Keep listening. Keep yeah. listening, folks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.